Hello everyone, and welcome to the Okami New Game Plus Any% Percent Speedrunning um, tutorial. Uh, right off the bat, I want to mention to look up the guide on speedrun.com. I'll post the link down below. And also to um, check out what you need at the start. In the guide, it says what you need at the start. Um, as an extra added little thing to that, once you have a file set up for that, do the entire run um, with that file set up. If you do that, uh, you'll basically clear every single cutscene properly, because sometimes it doesn't clear the right way. Um, another thing you might notice on my timer, to draw attention to that, is that uh, I start at minus 16. This is basically to take out this loading time. Um, you can do that if you want to. Each PS3 has a different loading time here. Uh, the in-game time doesn't really start until um, the very first gong. So right around here. So you want to keep that in mind. You can just like start the timing on the gong uh, manually as well if you'd like. I just like this. So right into the um, tutorial section, you want to always start with a dash to get yourself some speed, and then we're going to jump into cutscenes. Now what this does is it stores your speed, and before doing any analog inputs, you can jump out of it. You'll want to um, dash jump, uh, because that will give you more speed. I kind of messed it up there. But you can just like keep doing it, and that'll be the most important thing during this tutorial section, just jumping in and out of cutscenes. So that way you can keep full speed. Be sure not to hold the uh, analog stick before you get into the air. Draw a star. Now for the next part, the River of Heavens, uh, I'll be angling my camera in a certain way. And I'll be using the thick speed brush, which you activate by doing triangle and circle at the same time. And by angling my camera in the right way, I can get the whole river in one stroke, rather than having to do uh, multiple strokes, which would take a lot of time. Another thing uh, that is very important to mention is zooming in and out. Uh, you'll see me zoom in and out at certain sections. Usually I suggest following uh, the zoom because sometimes that'll make certain tricks a lot easier. In other cases I'll explain uh, where my own zooming might not be the right way to go for you. Um, because I have some very specific tendencies that other people don't. It's just preference. So right here we're going to use the thick brush again, triangle and circle at the same time. And this one you can just hold and time at the right moment. For this power slash again, just hold and wait until the rock appears. Here I'll let my camera basically just do all the slash work. Um, I'm holding the analog stick anyways. So you want to move right in between the rock and the torch to skip the first fight. And for the second fight, uh, you want to look to hit the brush. So first I'm going to aim for right here. And then I'm going to aim for that brush. And once you hit that brush, once you run through it, you've cleared the, the, the fight trigger. So I want to pay attention to those. Obviously just mash X through the water, just goes faster. So right here, I'm gonna stop holding my direction right as I exit, so I can restore my speed through the water. Uh, it, it, it'll probably take you a little bit to get used to that little timing, but generally just right before you exit the water, stop holding uh, the analog stick. Now right as I enter here, I'm gonna keep holding up, and the moment uh, my dash goes through, I'm gonna switch down because that way you can do a dash out of the um, actual, like, tree. Saves you a little bit of time.
walking like this basically just gets a little bit of movement optimization. So you want to go left here first and then jump all the way down and go right here. Now there are two ways to do uh, KT, so you're gonna sh uh, you're gonna see how I do it, right here. There we go. And you want to try and move around an invisible wall, like to the left of the boulder. There's a little bit of an invisible wall, and you want to slightly curve around it. That way you'll um, you'll miss it basically. It's very important that you curve it. If you don't curve it, um, you'll get stuck. Again, just moving through here. Try to like cut as many corners as you're walking as possible. Uh, that way you can um, make your life a lot easier. So right here we got our first fight coming up. I'm gonna cut this little bridge here, like that, and jump into the fight. You wanna keep your speed through the fight, so we're just gonna stand still throughout the entire fight. Now the first thing um, you wanna do in the fight is you're gonna go into your equipment. You wanna equip the Resurrection Beads on sub, the Eighth Wonder on main, you wanna equip the String of Beads, Peace Bell, and then end the fight by using a slip. Forgot the split, by the way. Again, I'm not moving at all. You want to stay still, because that'll allow you to restore your speed right here, like so. I usually jump in place there because it makes life easier. We're going to cut through here. Uh, this is a small movement optimization, saves a little bit of time. It's just nice. Keep an eye out on it. So for this fight, uh, we're just going to use a quick slip. Like so, and that's it. So up next you're gonna be drawing uh, the sun. Now the way um, you can really quickly turn into it is to just tap right, press the R3 button, and draw. So the R3 button is just like pressing in your um, right stick. <coughs> that way the, uh, the camera centers behind you and you instantly can see where you have to draw. It's a really nice feature. So for this slash, just simply start holding left uh, even before you uh, use the brush, that way you'll kind of move into it, but at the same time you'll get the cut a lot quicker. I want to try and look for that. Now here, uh, what you want to do is you want to hold the analog stick and um, button for as long as you can because that actually keeps going while you're trying to release the um, trying to release the brush. So you only really want to release all the buttons after you've released the brush. Now for the ball, the most important thing is to just roll it around the wall right here, and then this wall, and just push it through, and push it against the wall again. You always want to roll it against the wall, that way it becomes a lot easier to control. Move around it, and gently push it onto the thing. It'll take a while to get used to uh, to doing that, but with enough practice, it's easy. So for the sun here, we simply do the camera like that, use the brush, and draw a circle. You can walk up, but it's slower than actually using the camera like that. Quickly draw the constellation and draw a circle as quickly as you can. 
I try to hold the, for every circle, I try to hold both X and square. That, uh, that'll speed up your brush a lot. It's very important to try and learn uh, this faster brushes. So right here, I'm going to do a wall jump off of the torch. You want to try and aim for the torch like that and then do a KT. Now, during the whole time, you want to aim to the left because that way you can skip the cutscene. So you saw me land um, near those three brushes. You want to try and land there all the time because that'll guarantee not having that fight happen. So make sure you bend to the left. Here we're going to skip this fight simply by walking along the edge here. There is some leeway. Uh, you can go a little bit to the left, but try and stay on the on the right for as much as you can. Now the Konohana tree coming up right here is a little bit tricky sometimes. Uh, you want to just try and make sure you have you're close enough with it. It's all camera dependent, but try and be close enough. And be prepared to miss it. That's the most important tip I can give you. Right here, hold right and start dashing. So here, that movement can be a little bit faster, but it's fine. Uh, here we're gonna start going up here. Now here you want to keep your camera zoomed out. At least I like it that way. Because that way you can more easily see where you're going. And three KTs land you all the way up here and straight into that section. Now, at the start of Agata Forest, uh, you're going to be in the wrong entrance for casual play, basically. So you're going to be running through the um, through the Cursed Zone. Now, you want to try and avoid the torch by a wide margin, and then avoid the right side of that section there as well. Because there are, like, weird walls that will push you out, basically. So for the uh, blooming of the tree, you want a KT up here. Do a bonk. The bonk is very important, actually. If you don't do the bonk, you won't get enough height. Um, so that's important. Then you are going to do one more KT right here, and you're going to curve that around like that. Turn your camera a little bit. And there. Now, you might notice that uh, you don't see the tree yet. That's because I need to turn my camera a little bit more. It's very important that you turn your camera while you're falling out of bounds like that. If you don't do that... Um, you'll get stuck, um, basically. So for the tunnel, um, just get lucky. Basically. Uh, so right here, uh, there's a Waka cutscene until about that line on the wall. You want to aim for that line and start KTing up here. Again, the bonk KT is very important. If you don't do that, you won't get enough height. Oh, damn. Okay, let's try that again. <laughs> Don't be afraid to be bad at KTs. There we go. Now, right here, um, I always aim for the right side of the stone right here because the cutscene trigger is still there. So you want to try and keep to the right as much as you can. If you go to the left, you'll hit the actual... Um, you'll hit the trigger. Here we go up here, again, use a bonk, otherwise you won't get up here. Uh, if you're kind of new, uh, you might want to like check for the little sparkles and whatever, and take your time here. Because if you miss this, you'll lose a minute. Uh, most runners will just like quickly run up and run down again. They, they'll usually see the check. Now important here is to not get stuck at all while walking down here. If you get stuck a little bit, you'll lose your speed during the next jump. And since we jump over the fence here, you'll lose your speed. Now for liquid KTs, uh, they're kind of special. What you have to do is simply jump. Do a dash very close to the water. That's about enough. Switch KTs and then jump out of it. Um, as a start, you might want to mash a little bit to get to, to really see the timing and feel it. 
but there is a timing to the jump after the um, after the switching of the Karmic Transformer. So here for Takapas, we're going to do some optimal movement. And you want to use the zoom out here to basically lock your path. This way you just walk straight. And we're aiming for that little dimple in the wall. That I'm going to be using in a bit. So here we go into the dimple. Do another bonk AT. The bonk is very important once more. And on the wall jump, you want to hold right. That way you can get over here. Uh, if you jump correctly, you'll be able to save your speed as well. And then we're going to go into the tunnel. Now, while we go into the tunnel first, um, simply you cannot bloom the tree without defeating Waka, so we have to walk through here. Try and stay close to the wall. Just optimal movement. You'll get better at the movement eventually. Now for Waka, uh, you want to do a full charge on your Glaive, and then release. So, full charge, and release. Usually you can do that really quickly. Um, learn to uh, listen to the timing of your Glaive. It has an audio cue as to how much is charged. You usually want to wait like one or two seconds until it's like fully charged. That way you can just almost instantly kill Waka there. I also suggest, uh, I'm going through this a little bit slowly here and there to show you guys uh, a few things. I suggest looking at world record um, at the time for more optimal little things that uh, will be done. So there's two ways you can do this. Uh, I'm going to show you guys the safe way. The safe way is to simply walk around the edge here until you hit this little hole. And then you should be able to walk a little bit further and bloom. There we go. The unsafe way basically jumps at that point. Again, look at world record for more optimal ways. But you might miss the tree and if you fall down, you'll have to KT your way back up. And that's... Not very nice. Here we just jump down and again using the zoom out to lock your movement in. Once you have your movement locked in you can still change direction using the R uh, stick which is generally uh, a lot nicer because the movements are a lot smaller. Want to aim a little bit for the end right here, because otherwise you might get uh, thrown down. So for the Bud Ogre, just do a quick bead, do a circle, and right after you do the circle you can do the um, slip, that'll save you a little bit of time. For the Imp, you want to blot him and usually use your Glaive, if it's too far away for your Glaive, just use your beads. You store up speed, you jump right at the end there and you can restore it. Very important that you uh, store your speed there. It just saves you a lot of time uh, to quickly store it. I'm gonna go into Sasa Sanctuary and we're gonna do some out of bounds shenanigans. And this one can be a little bit tricky to really get a hang off. So I'm gonna try and explain it as much as I can. So first you want to get into this rock, do a, K do a wall jump, KT, hopefully not bonk into the wall. Uh, it doesn't matter if you do a bonk KT, if you feel unsafe, uh, you can do a bonk KT if you want to, to get that little bit of extra height. Do another KT right here, and bam, you're behind the loading zone. Now what you want to do, there are multiple ways, you can either line up from here, or line up from here. I like to line up from here. And you see that little uh, line there on the block? That's what I'm aiming for. Something like this. Now, uh, I didn't do it properly, so we're gonna fail this one. Too bad. Ah, well. I'm gonna see if I can save it. Yeah, see? So this time I didn't have enough speed, so I undershot it. So I'm just gonna fall out and um, let that go. But as you can see, this is where I was aiming for. That's what you're trying to do. So now I'm going to do it while walking, like so. I use the map to check my uh, check my gauge. This is about correct. 
And once the, the sky turns light, two, you want to count about two seconds, let go of the stick, and there you go. You fall right in. So counting two seconds after you after the light after um, the sky turns light is very important. If you don't do that, you'll uh, either undershoot or overshoot. Talk to this guy. So here you want to be careful with mashing. You don't want to over mash because if you get first frame, this happens. Kind of have to just like lightly tap and hope you like get lucky. So, right here at the start, you just want to go really fast and try to use your brush powers as quickly as you can. The important thing is getting uh, Mr. Bamboo down, so that's why you do the little circle right there, and you're going to wait here for another little circle. It saves just enough time to be worth it. Oops. Now, this specific power is very annoying. Uh, you want to try and feel it like this. You want to feel it like this when you're setting up, basically. When you're doing your full run through, because this one has the most, the highest tendency to fail. So, being able to skip those cutscenes quickly is very important. Here, you just like hold up and brush, and you can just let go really quickly don't really need to do anything. So right here the camera is doing weird things. What you want to do is just walk left and tap the R3 button then zoom out. Zooming out here is very important. Uh, if you are a little bit scary, scared here you can just do a bonk AT to get yourself some extra height and you just go straight le right here and you just keep going right right if you're not very confident, uh, what you can do here, 3 KTs is enough, like right here I'm enough. But if you're not confident in it, you can do an extra KT, and that way you land right here. Don't be afraid of doing that extra KT. Now right here we're gonna move on to Ryushima Coast. Now, um, for City Checkpoint, the skip there it's a little bit finicky. I'm gonna try and explain it, though, in the best way I can. So right off the bat, you want to try and get full speed. Um, just try and walk straight over here. Jump down and use the little, use that little light uh, lighting torch as your guide. You want to jump right next to it. So once you're just slightly before next to it, so we're gonna walk towards it and do this. I like to do that one zoomed in uh, to get it a little better. You want to aim a little bit to the right, right and forward here, and just keep going, keep going. Just mash the X button so you go faster. Then right before you hit the corner, you're going to stop mashing X and jump in like this. There you go. Now you want to jump over here. And it's very important that you try and get your camera somewhere around here, basically. So you can see yourself, but you're very, very to the left with it. That way you can very easily do this bonk KT, same as a liquid KT. Bonk, full KT, and hold right. There you go. You want to hold right on the wall jump, because that way you'll just land on here instantly. Um, you might want to have to do another KT to uh, fix that, but that is just about the way to do it. There is another way of coming up, uh, going up there, but you can also just like do a couple of KTs. So for Ryo Coast right here, we're gonna go into the curse zone for a little bit. This is a skip a fight. Now it's important that you jump a couple of times while going up here. So 
because slopes are weird, you just want to jump a bit up. Okay, there we go. You don't want to land on the roof, but I guess I just landed on the roof and jump off right here. You want to try and land like right in front of it. Here we're doing another bonk AT. The bonk is again very important. If you don't do the bonk, you won't get enough height. You want to curve around to the right a little bit on that wall jump. So here you're just going to angle your camera somewhere around here. And that way you can easily get the water and just... Oop. There you go. I'm going to go up here and you don't need to go all the way up. You can just water spout right here. Just as easy. You want to angle your camera up a little bit right before blooming, uh, otherwise the bloom won't work. Um, and you want to always draw a really big circle there. If you draw a, draw a small circle, it might not work all the time. Big circles work a lot better on that tree. So we're going to be doing a stair clip right now. Um, you want to try and figure out your own setup. Every runner has their own setup and things they look for. What I look for is I tap a little bit like this on the camera. I hit the lantern and I go straight to the right. Then um, you hold forward for as much as you can. And the moment you see the speech bubble from um, the sensei, you do a KT. You can also, for safety, do a dash first. So you have some maneuvering you can do, like so. But you'll overshoot a little bit, or in this, my case, undershoot to compensate. If you hit the loading zone, that's fine. You just go back through into the dojo. Don't worry about it. But the important part is don't fully undershoot and get stuck in the box. Because if you get stuck in the box, you're going to have to KT your way out. You can just mash the X button for Holy Eagle. It's the top one. And just quickly go through here. I just want to walk out here. I kind of did that one wrong, but don't worry about it. go straight out again. Uh, usually there's a cutscene here, but because I messed up, there isn't. I want to move over here and jump off. And you can do a liquid KT here to extend this jump. Save some time because moving through water is slow. And try to keep your speed out of the water. So the same thing I did at River of the Heavens. So right here, I like to zoom in, but I'm going to zoom out so you get... Uh, no, I'm just going to keep it zoomed in. You might want to do this one zoomed out because it works just a little bit, bit better. So there's a big fight trigger over here. You're going to go over here and do a KT. Now you want to try and do the KT uh, around that right side because the further left right here you go, um, at one point the game is like, oh, you're not above ground so you can't KT. Now right here you want to zoom out and at that tree start your jumps. I'm going to do full dash KTs, basically. If I can get a KT going, that is. There you go. And another one. And then a dash to get over, but I kind of messed that one up. So we're just going to do this old school. There's two KTs up. Bonk isn't needed, but I got it anyways. And just go straight into the loading zone. So here we just mash through some cutscenes. Choose a slip on this fight. Uh, all the slip counts for battle and, and things are explained in the actual 
route guide on speedrun.com, so do check that one out. So here we're going to talk to the merchant, and we are going to buy ourselves 11 mermaid coins. Why 11? Because it only takes one input, and we instantly have all the mermaid coins we need. Run up here, uh, you want to jump into these guys a little early. The cutscene won't really start until you're low enough. And then you want to try and get behind the hut here, and then you can just jump and do the sun. The jump is to keep your speed, um, you can just but make sure you draw the sun behind the hut. So that's Orca set up. I should split for that. Nope. And just run up here. So right now, uh, I got stuck a little bit. If I jump, I'm gonna lose my speed, like so. So whenever you get stuck for a, a few seconds, uh, you lose your speed, so be mindful of that. I'm gonna use our mermaid coin here and just hold up for one tick. There we go, into Takapas. I'm gonna go straight up here into Kuza village. You can do this one, this section uh, zoomed out. I like doing it zoomed in, because, well, you can actually more easily see things without having to do this, basically. I guess zoomed out would make you see things a little bit better. So here, jump into this cutscene. You'll get a feel for where the cutscenes are uh, the more runs you do, so don't worry about that. Um, there's some optimal movement here that I'm gonna skip. Um, instead, I'm gonna run around like this. You wanna, for that bend, you wanna be careful, by the way, this one, uh, because it has a tendency to make you lose your speed, um, because you're running through it too harshly. The more you do it, the more you'll get a feel for that, but, uh, be mindful of it. You wanna jump to the left here, and just go straight up. So, coming up next is the Gilstorm part. Now, for Gilstorm, um... I highly recommend practicing it um, just about every time before you go and do runs simply because it's a good KT starter and um, it's really obnoxious and having it in your fingers just makes you feel a lot better. Now right here you want to go until you're about here and start jumping up. There you go, you keep going, the camera will change right now. Do three KTs up, if I can do them. And you're over, you're over the invisible wall right now. Now the important part is, you want to hold left, so you want to have your controller right here whenever you're outside of the menu. Uh, if you don't do that, you'll get stuck in a box, so... Go over this. I only do a single jump here. If you still have your air dash, you can do a double jump into a dash to uh, skip going through uh, a completely black area, basically. The screen will turn black and you have to do a blind KT. To avoid that, you can either do a single jump KT into a double jump KT, or you can do a double jump KT into an air dash. Right now, because I've used my air dash, we're gonna do a single jump into a double jump. Like so. Now, the important part is I'm gonna arc to the right, uh, is that you want to stay out of the box. So this is where the box is. You see that black line, the black harsh thing? You wanna try and keep to the left of that at all times. If you go to the right of that line, uh, you'll go back into the box and it's really obnoxious to get out. Now, as you're clearing the box, you'll instantly see on your right a little white thing. Now, what you want to do is aim slightly to the left of that, and we're just going to go into dash KTs. Now, dash KTs are basically just letting go of your KT, and like so, and 
doing a dash right before you jump. Again, a KT tutorial is available on speedrun.com, so you can look that one up for all the details on KTing. Uh, I do highly recommend learning to buffer a frame right after you have done the KT, because uh, that way you won't drop as far if you feel it. Unbuffered KTs are definitely only if you are one of the best runners of this game. So we're just gonna go straight over here for a little while. Now you might want to tune out and skip parts of this, um, however there are a few more things that I'm going to explain along the way, so be mindful of that. So right in the distance, uh, right about, well, just about now, pretty soon, in a couple KTs, you'll start seeing a little circle thing. Slightly to the left of the little white part. That's just, that is basically what we're truly aiming for. The closer you get, the more of the polygons will disappear. So there you see that blue block, you saw it for a moment, and now you can definitely see it. That's what you want to get. You do a few more dash KTs, and then you go into straight up jump KTs. So instead of letting your dash go through, you stop letting your dash go through and just go up. Remember to always keep holding forward throughout doing these KTs in Gilstorm, because you always want to go forward. You have 100 KTs to do, might as well keep going forward, even during these. Now usually, um, most runners will do this until a certain point where they feel like it's right. What I usually use as a cue is when on the top left you see little bits of blue for more than a couple of KTs. It's a lot of fuel based. But there you see like a little bit of gray and, and stuff. But also like a good tip is to just be higher than uh, most of the stuff you can see right now. Ooh, missing a lot of KTs. Again, be sure to practice this. Uh, the more you practice it, the better you get. So right now we got a nice big open section on our left, top left. So we're gonna go forward means we've got just about enough height to go forward for a bit. What you want to look for right now is to get those really big black polygons in the distance to go away, and the only way to do that is to get closer, not higher. There you already see like one of the polygons disappearing from time to time. It's gonna completely disappear in a bit. There you go. You wanna keep trying to aim for the center of that black circle in the distance. Throughout this. KTs are a little bit rusty right now, so I do apologize for that. So now, uh, when the... F this polygon just about has completely disappeared, like that, you can actually see the little platform we're going to, and you always notice that you're too low right now. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna switch into straight up jump KTs again and keep holding forward
And you want to go up until you have cleared the other black polygon that's in the screen right now. That one won't go away. But you can basically just jump over it. They're just purely cosmetic. They don't have hitboxes or whatever, so don't worry about it. Even if you see a little bit of ground beneath you uh, during this section, you might see some green. Uh, you cannot jump on that. You cannot land on that. Just keep going. You do not want to land at all, basically. There we go. We've cleared that. We're going to do a few extra KTs. Just a little bit higher. And then we're going to go straight forward. So there's two ways to approach the platform. You can either go for the Void Warp, uh, which I am going to show off right here and explain. What you can also do is simply clip through the bottom of the, uh, of the platform. Now when you do that, you want to try and do that uh, at the front part of the, of the, of the platform. So I'm gonna, so you want to do that just about like right here. That's where you want to do that. But for the Void Warp, what you want to do right now, the moment you can see the windmill and the music has changed, you're going to change your... Um, you're going to zoom out instead of being zoomed in, and you're going to do a few KTs forward until you can see the windmill again, and then you're just going to go straight up and start changing your angle on the camera. Like so. Might want to try and get to the other side of this one, because if you don't do that, you might have to do a blind KT. No one wants to do a blind KT. There we go. I'm going to change my angle just a little bit. You want to stay somewhat far away and we're gonna just go straight up there we go uh, I'm gonna do one more KT real quick so what you want to do is you want to try and get onto this line basically straight in the middle of this little like fence that's where you want to go so we're gonna do some KTs to go straight into that one well miss that one don't worry just do it again if you fill it um, you might want to try Moving out a little bit and going for it again. Be careful uh, when doing Void Warp. Um, you might clip through the bottom of the... Ah, damn. Come on. Through the bottom of the platform anyways. Wow, I'm suddenly unable to KT. There we go. So you want to be careful uh, doing that. Generally, you want to go in with the dash. If that doesn't work, you can always do a KT and just let yourself bonk. And after the bonk, you can do another, like, dash KT. I seem to be having a lot of trouble with it right now. There we go. Sometimes you can just fall into it, sometimes it can be finicky. Uh, I suggest, like, trying to find a save file where you can easily learn it. Now, the important part right now is that we're currently not voided out. So what you want to do is you want to hold the brush and release it. You can usually just tap it and that way you get this. You can't, I'm holding the brush button right now and nothing's happening until now. So right now we finally void it out. If you don't do that, you will soft walk. Do not like not hold the brush right there. Okay, so right now you might notice the constellation does not have any um, any lines. You want to learn the positions. They're just about here, here, and here. There you go. The more runs you do, the better you'll get at basically just guessing them. And right now the game will ask you to do a Gilstorm to the right. So you just hold the hold the brush and you do that. There you go. Perfect.
Now, there are two ways to go about leaving Kusa Village. Uh, if you're very confident in your KTs, what you can do is do a Void right here, where you uh, KT up five times and... Um, and basically just Void out. If you're not confident in your KTs, uh, I suggest simply going for walking around. Um, but once you get better, doing these KTs will definitely save you time. Zoom in and just let yourself fall and try to make sure you angle your camera towards the exit so you get a nice little void like that. And then we're gonna leave. Remember to stay hydrated as well. Fieldstorm might take you a lot of energy uh, once you first start doing it. Um, but with enough practice, you'll be able to just bust it out and do a couple of kill storms in each run session. So don't worry too much about it. I'm gonna jump in here. And throw the mermaid coin in. So here you want to jump like somewhere over here and keep to the right. You do not want to go over the left side uh, because that might actually trigger the cutscene with uh, Kokari. Since you have double jump you can just jump over the waterfall like this. There you go. And you want to go right here for more optimal movement where you just simply jump over here. Now, we're going to jump over the uh, gate to Tsuta Runes, but the important part is right now that if you if you are like very close up here over it, um, your ability to double jump will randomly disappear. So you want to try and stay away for a little bit and then do a full dash double jump afterwards. I'm going to have to do an extra KT because I showed that off. Also, you definitely want to do this part zoomed out. So you want to jump in like this and go straight behind it. It's a very general area, but basically just above the gate is where you want to aim. Now here you want to jump up here and instantly jump when you land. If you don't really do that and you just keep going, you'll hit the cutscene. You do not want to hit that cutscene. Go straight up. Uh, you want to aim for the bridge. Keep your camera zoomed in because you want to keep the bridge in view. First KT, you can just go straight up, and after that, you just hold forward. So right now, we're right next to the invisible wall. I'm gonna... Oh, uh, please. I usually let a dash go through, because the invisible wall is not created equal everywhere. I'm gonna do just one extra KT. There I didn't clear it properly, uh, it can be really finicky, you'll just have to kind of learn it. There we go. So for these fights, um, most of it is basically just use a slip, and that's it. For this one, you want to do the butt ogre thing again, where you bloom and then instantly use a slip. Again, that just saves some frames. It's not that much. You want to store up some speed and make sure you do not jump at all. You want to keep your speed. You can just run into the wall right here. As long as you jump, you'll just keep your speed. As long as you don't jump, you'll just keep your speed throughout this section. Run into the next one, like so, and that's all you need. Want to angle your camera, do a sun, and start mashing. If you get lucky, get the cutscene skip. If you don't, well, ah well. It's 18 seconds, but it doesn't really matter uh, as long as you're playing well.
So instead of going all the way around to the pots, we're just going to jump to them. Uh, if you're not very safe about them, you can do this, where you do just one extra KT. And that way you can see all the pots and draw a nice little line. Uh, once you get better, you'll know exactly where the pots are and you do not have to do that extra KT. But it's a nice little safety strat to make sure you get all the pots first try. Instead of like pondering on what pots you missed, yes or no. You want to keep to the left here. And try not to get stuck anywhere because we're going to do a few jumps. You want to keep your speed and jump straight towards this section. There we go. Now for these, I usually draw one, two, three, four, five, six circles and release. Uh, you want to keep like drawing the circles uh, while you're releasing. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I keep drawing and then I let go. It's just that little bit of extra movement actually helps a lot. That was not enough. It's not a if it's not enough, you just draw one extra circle and you should be fine. Got. Wow. There you go. Getting fast at that one can be really obnoxious, but if you're fast, you'll do fine. So here you want to just do a dash jump if you've lost your speed. And do double jump so you can skip all the islands. Do another dash jump. And do 1kt if I can manage it. I did not manage it. Okay, let's try that again. There's a cutscene trigger there that I'm trying to go over. I do not trust it right now. You want to kind of hit the top part right here, like this. There you go. Can be a little bit finicky. You'll learn the bounce of that, um, of that uh, trigger eventually. Don't worry too much about it. You'll fill it often enough and don't worry about failing. It's only 20 seconds. So you're going to go to the left of this stone and keep going like this. So this is just movement. We're going to go over to Shinshu Field. I do highly suggest uh, keeping a tabs on the notes to help you through your first few runs. Uh, they're very, very explanatory and give you a good idea of what you're supposed to do and where you're supposed to go. Um, maybe not all the strats are um, completely lining up with what's the current strats, but don't worry too much about it. I usually jump off uh, at the little white part there. That gives you just enough. Don't worry about getting full speed, just jump off. You want to go here quickly, you don't want to always have your speed ready. So the thing I should have mentioned about fights, by the way, is that at the uh, result screen you have to mesh start to make it go away a little bit faster. It'll save you a bunch of time. For this fight, if he's close enough, if um, the imp is close enough, you can do a jump into a beads attack. Uh, if he's not, uh, you'll have to rely on the um, on a slip. You'll learn eventually when you can, where you can like snipe and where you have to use a slip. There we go. Again, making sure I save speed. I do a little jump there because there's some weird kind of bump. If you do a jump, you can skip over the bump and keep your speed. We're gonna go into this fight. And just start off straight with a slip. Now technically, uh, using um, Blot and the Glaive is slightly faster, but... Um, because we can't see him when he spawns, it's easier to just use a slip and he'll die instantly. You'll learn the timing on these green imps eventually. Um, just try it a lot. And there we go. This is one of the few fights where we do not have to store speed. 
but do remember to mash on the results screen. So right here you want to go a little bit wide, um, that way you can easily get a full charge right here, full speed, and go right onto here. Um, with full speed these jumps just become a lot easier and you really want to try and get that. So right here with Orca we're going to move around a little bit um, and we're going to basically just, you can mash but you can also time the X button. You want to keep going until you hit the white stuff over there, and then you can just go straight up in KT. You want to try and stay over, um, over Orca as much as you can doing that. If you slip off, you'll basically um, be screwed. So run up here, and you want to run up until you hit uh, that little corner, just about, just in front of it. And that's where you can draw the star for the Stargazer. And that'll give you the galaxy. Now remember that this is all a bit on a timer because you made it night. If you do this bit a bit too slowly, uh, you can get screwed on day and night cycle, but usually you're fine. You really have to mess things up for it. So right here, you just want to jump down. Uh, don't worry about landing on Orca first try. You can just do this. You want to try and learn uh, how to do that, though. Um, usually by remembering the position you jumped up on. But it's not too much of a hassle, so don't worry too much about it. So going up here, uh, you want to go to the left, and up here onto this little platform, zoom out, do a jump, and make sure to bonk again, uh, if you don't bonk you won't get enough height. You do two KTs, and try to keep try to keep height as much as possible. If you lose a little bit too much height this won't work, like so. So you have to do another KT and you can get out of bounds. And here you can see the underside, and you want to jump towards this little section, basically. Like, basically above this line. You can usually do that in 1KT, uh, you'll see that in most good runs. But because this is a tutorial, uh, we're just gonna do this the slow way. And there you go. It's a small thing you have to keep in mind with the invisible wall and where you have to go. So running through here, um, because you have the peace bell equipped, you can just walk around these scrolls that won't attack you. And here you want to try and time your jump. Uh, it'll be a little bit finicky and you'll have to learn it um, so you can land over here. If you don't make your jump, don't worry too much about it. Uh, you can just swim to it and it'll just lose you, t lose you time, but it won't be the end of the world. I'm gonna run up here. And get the key to the door. After you've done that, uh, you're going to angle your camera somewhat like this uh, so that you can get both the water and the orb. And you want to do a little bit of a wavy line towards the orb, like so. Wait two wiggles, and then do it again. One, two, do it again. 
And once you hit the third one, you want to go into the doorway as quickly as possible. So you get this cutscene uh, where Isen is like, oh, look at that orb. And then you get the cutscene of the orb dying right afterwards. For the fight, simply use a slip every time you see the foxes. These are also all uh, lined out in the notes. All these fights. After that, you just want to run around for a little bit to get your speed up and jump right as you have your speed ready. So for the uh, RNG asset, you just have to walk and try to avoid the little black dots. I tend to zoom out just about here. Um, and then you have to do a risky jump right here and hope to get lucky. And then another risky jump right here. If you do not get lucky, uh, just go to the closest um, little water spout thing and you'll be fine. Again, those jumps are purely luck based and you get the hang of the jumps. Um, they're always very unsafe, but you have to do them. Just go straight here. Um, going in, in and out of these areas saves speed, so make sure to dash jump in and out of them. Including on the elevator, you can just jump into it and that's then a dash jump out of it. Like so. Even going through this door saves your speed. Now, here for Orca, you definitely don't want to just keep mashing. You just want to mash a little bit and let go the moment you see Orca's little tail thingies just wiggle weirdly. That's when you know you've got the next point and you can just mash every now and then instead of having to mash the entire way. It really saves your hand, hands a little bit. So for this section, a lot of zoomed out movement because it's just faster and tighter than zoomed in movement. And you just want to go fast. Remember that there is a fight right here, so you want to try and avoid that. We do a little jump there because the polygons are weird. So, just jump around here. Again, trying to hug the walls as much as you can for optimal movement. Up here you want to make sure you jump as much as you can up the slope. Because it can be very, very obnoxious. It, you'll just get have to get used to it. Just jump into the last cutscene to get the speed restore in a bit. There we go. And jump into here. Won't get the speed restore here, but... You have to jump in there anyways. Be careful with uh, mashing the, ma uh, the dash button there. If you just mash it, you'll just instantly hit the wall, lose your time, just gently mash it. Same goes for here. That way you'll usually have the uh, analog input work first and then the dash input. Oop. That was the wrong inputs. I was thinking of a different section there.
So uh, going over the lava is basically just a liquid KT. What you want to try and do is uh, avoid getting onto that little pier over there because there's a cutscene. So you want to jump over it and do a liquid KT. Now liquid KT here is a little bit finicky and for instance that one is too high and you can just save it by doing it at the end of your dash. Now I highly suggest practicing this a bunch of times just like for a good hour or so just jump back and forth back and forth back and forth because um, learning the ins and outs of lava skip is very important. It can be just really finicky. So for evil Rao you just do a full charge and the moment that uh, evil Rao gets close to you you usually um, have a full charge so you can just insta kill her so on the way back here the camera is going to lock your analog stick so you want to jump into it and that way you have an unlocked analog stick to walk through one you count these little mats going up so you have full speed going up here so you can do a liquid KT. Remember that there's a cutscene over here, like at the pier. Um, if you just go straight, instead of slightly to the left, you'll hit the cutscene and fall into the lava. You wanna try and keep to the left there. Now it's just a matter of going right towards North Rio coast. Most of these doors uh, in the aristocratic quarter will restore speed and you don't even have to jump into most of them. There we go. So you want to jump right here and then you want to jump off the bridge. Now the main reason we do that is because there's still a cutscene on top of the bridge. If you go around it like this, uh, you'll skip the cutscene and you'll never have to see it. You jump over the bridge like that, by the way, on the... Um, on the steep angle, so you can skip getting a little bump at the end. Call that bridge bump skip. It's not very important, but it might save you some aggravation. Again, zoomed out for optimal movement. Doing little jumps here and there to try and do speed restoration. So right here, uh, you want to start aiming for that little outcropping uh, next to the tree. And we're going to KT up the thing right here. Now, you usually see good runners uh, do one double jump right here and then one normal jump. But if you're a little bit scared, you can do a double jump like this. Uh, doing one, doing a single jump KT um, usually helps. Uh, you cut that corner, by the way, that I just did uh, because there's a giant fight trigger over there that you're trying to skip. So be sure to not hit that, cut, hit that by um, cutting the corner. So now we're going to go up here and we're going to do what we like to call kt um, It's also named Labyrinth Skip. Because you skip the Oni Island Labyrinth. Now what you want to do is... First off, you want to try and get full speed. The way you do that is... You just wiggle a little bit, get some zigzags going, like so. And now we have full speed. I'm going to just save it right here um, because we're going to go up here. Do a bonk KT straight up to get over here. Actually, you don't have to do the bonk. Now, the important part of going over these slopes is that you do not want to be running over them. At all times, you want to try and jump, and you want to try and aim for these kinds of jumps. So the moment you land, you jump. Um, we call this green hopping, and if you do that, you'll, you'll be able to retain height. 
So you want to try and continuously green hop. Now your first tell if you're high, uh, too high or not is like this little um, black thingy. And after that is this black smudge. You want to try and be above either of them. If you're below them, um, you might not have enough height and you'll have some trouble. So right here, we have just enough height. We get on to the right polygons. We zoom in because the camera is what matters here. And then we're going to just do this one and let go. So you want to try and get the camera as close as you can so that you can draw as early as you can. Skip that little cutscene right before drawing. It saves 0.8 of a second, so it's always worth it. So in your uh, run through of the game, you want to fill this one a couple of times as well, because uh, it's, an, it's really annoying here. And if you can't easily skip that, um, yeah, that'll just lose you time. Now going into Oni Island interior, uh, what you do not want to do is ever confuse that you have to go here. If you go here, you soft lock. If you go here, you don't. So you just go up here and hold right and turn your camera to the right as well. And there until you see the, uh, the loading zone. And then you want to do a dash if you're a little bit scared about your KTs. And then you can just do a single jump KT into the loading zone. Now, in the 2D section, uh, the all the cycles start the moment you hit that switch. Uh, hit the, hit, yeah, hit that switch. And I'm gonna try and show off a really cool kind of cycle skip. So we're gonna try and do that. Wanna wait a little bit here and go. One of the best ways to um, basically get your height to stop instantly is doing a dash light there. Want to try and get up here like this. You might accidentally hit the fire uh, on the candle right there. Be mindful of that. And if you're fast enough, you can do a dash jump right over here. I kind of messed it up because I didn't let my dash through. But you can skip waiting for this one, basically. If you're fast enough. So right as you enter that key, the other cycle starts. And this cycle is extremely slow. So you can just take your time, uh, you can just walk here if you want to. You're gonna have to wait for the cycle anyways, so you might as well just have some fun doing it, like so. Now for the this cycle you want to go as early as you can, somewhere around here. And you want to, every time you do a the, 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 end the double jump, you want to end on a dash, because that way you can get an, uh, a one cycle. So jump, jump, dash, jump, jump, dash, jump, jump, dash. Uh, you'll get used to it eventually. Then we're gonna go up here. Um, this is basically just... Look what I'm doing and copy that. You wanna do two dash KTs. I only, I'm only gonna do one because I'm bad. So you get all the way up here onto the stairs. And then you wanna run down here. Now because you don't have mist, just run into the spider. That way you, it'll go up instantly. And make sure not to press the button accidentally to race against Toby. Because if you have to start the race in the middle of the cutscene, uh, he'll beat you. So again, just run into the spider. That way, you'll go away. Jump over here. You want to jump at the end of the stairs. Um, and right as you get full speed. Uh, because that way, uh, you won't uh, get bumps. And bumps are annoying. So right here, we're going to jump straight up there. Don't be too afraid about it, you can just do one KT and one jump and you're in. And we're gonna go on to Ninetales, the first boss we get to fight in the entire run. So a fun thing about the Ninetales constellation is your brush will always start on this one, so you can just instantly tap and finish the rest. The rest is all preference, I like to go left first, some people like to go right first. Now for Ninetales the first thing you do is do a beat attack, and you want to try and before uh, he raises the sword you want to try and do the thunder attack. 
Uh, the fat one is usually a little bit to your left. Uh, he has a little bit more health than the rest of the enemies, so you want to try and get that one first. Wait a little bit, do another beat attack, and again, hit the lightning on the sword. For the old one, you want to go a little bit further to the back, like so. And hit that one before you do the... Um, before you do the... Um, other thing. Now you want to try and get close to the last remaining Ninetales and start mashing uh, your sub weapon right here so you instantly get that quick kill on the final phase. Make sure not to save the game. Uh, you might accidentally do like go into the menu and it takes forever, so try not to do that. So, right here, we're gonna zoom out, charge up full speed, and on this little Little outcropping, we're gonna jump over right here. And we're gonna do the same on the river. Now this one is a little bit tricky. Uh, I suggest practicing it just a little bit. So you can get over here and land perfectly. It's actually a, a lot harder than it looks. Um, so you might fill it in runs a couple of times. It happens. You'll usually feel by your controller. If it starts vibrating heavily, uh, you've missed it. I'm gonna go in here, and for the first time, instead of holding up for the um, for the spring, you have to hold down. Very important to keep that in mind, that it's up, 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 down. I'm gonna go straight back left, and onto here. And then you might notice I use my camera a lot more for uh, changing direction than anything else. So we're gonna... KT up here, it's just two dash KTs right as you exit the bridge. Then you're gonna wait for the lightning and hit it right there. This way you can skip the whole cutscene of Issen saying, oh, what's this? Helps you out. So just go straight in here. And uh, you are already currently in the Kamui map, so what you can do here is you can do another dash jump to restore your speed. And out of this tunnel, uh, you can restore your speed as well. You might forget it because there's a little cutscene before it. Uh, I sure do it quite often, but just make sure to remember it. Okay, so for the Oki skip, we're going to go over here. Where you want to jump on the highest part of that little hill and slightly to the right of this tree. We're gonna do three KTs up until we reach over the invisible wall. Now there's two things you can do now. Uh, I'm gonna show off the harder strat, but the easier strat is to simply jump to this guy and do the, the thunder arrow thing and then bloom the tree from there. The harder strat is to fall out of bounds, make sure your camera is below you, still zoomed out, And I'm gonna KT under the map. I wanna get close. At least three KTs, then um, zoom back in. And you wanna draw a circle around there. It's gonna be hard to really learn where you need to draw the circle. But usually, if, you, if you're if you a bit too scared about it, you can do a fourth KT and then bloom the tree out of bounds. Now, this is the scariest part. Uh, this is uh, the main softlock area. If you're scared about uh, softlocking here, um, which I definitely was when I first started out, what you can do is just go straight up for one KT. There you go and then do two KTs forward. You wanna land somewhere next to the scroll usually. Ooh. I need to focus, there we go. You wanna land somewhere next to the scroll or at least past the scroll and you're fine. The rock is also a good method of, show, of uh, telling. 
You definitely want to keep your height, so that's why you do the extra KT up. If you're still really scared about it and you fill it from time to time, um, be sure to add an extra KT. That way you'll be safe uh, anytime. So in Whip Cure, um, we're just going to go straight up ahead. And jump up here, so we can do a little bit of a skip. You want to do the bonk here, just the bonk AT. And that way you can quite quickly go up here. Now next you want to start on the stone, uh, this will give you just enough height, and do an extra bonk for extra height if you like. It's not really necessary, but I like doing it. And just with two KTs you'll get up here. Uh, if you ever get stuck in the gate by the way, that's a thing that can happen. Uh, you just face the village and you bonk against the other side and that way you'll just clip back into uh, this area. Next up in the Esofuchi area, uh, you want to go straight here. And you want to kind of line yourself up with this little bit of stair. Because remember, in the actual like normal way of playing this, uh, there's a giant rainbow bridge from there. And you want to go up until you see this pattern on the ground. Just about here, you want to go straight up. Don't mind the dash too much, uh, it, it can happen, just try and stay in the same spot a bit. Two, and you want to go up for six KTs. Three. Four. Five. Six. And that way you've entered the arc early. So you just want to keep going until Marco stops you for a bit. Uh, don't worry too much about your speed. Trying to restore a little bit of speed you built up is not worth it. Uh, you want to go for Blight first. Uh, the main reason for this is that uh, going this way saves you 0.3 seconds over going the other way. Um, with the, the these guys with the Celestials, you can just run into their cutscene and speed restore right out of it. On the other the way out, however, you do have to jump into them. So since we don't have mist on Blight, we're gonna do some trickery. The first thing you have to do is to walk close to him until he does that. That way you can skip one of his patterns and he'll just go into that attack. Then you have to wait for this one. Then you want to look for Gold Nail, that's this one. Cut it and hit it once with a fully charged glaive. And that way you can defeat Blight really quickly. The walking up to him on the first cycle uh, is the only time you want to walk up to him, by the way. Otherwise, um, you might get him to move around a bunch, and that's very annoying and it loses you a lot of time. Jump in. And go on to the next one. So the Orochi strat can be a little bit of uh, a hard thing. I really do suggest practicing this one as well. Um, after a little bit of practice you'll be able to uh, do it very easily and very quickly. But there are some finer points you have to pay attention to. So right off the bat, we're gonna start gaining speed and go to the left towards Earth. I'm gonna do a little bit of a circle so that Earth can start. And then walk around the puddle here, a little wide. And you wanna time going to the left with the head of poison. And then time the slash uh, to Earth again with the way po the poison head is moving. 
I usually stand to the right here a little bit, and this way you can get all three hats at the same time. Do one, two, three, very carefully. There you go. I'm gonna go over here, and this time we don't have to do a circle around the puddle. Uh, we do want to do that on this one. And again, time in with the movement of the head. Nope. And voila. This time uh, you want to try and hit the bell over here as well. That'll save you using uh, a single slip. And it saves about mm, a second or so. It's a nice little time save. Now for the heads, uh, you're gonna have to learn the timing. So you just have to wait and right as they go, bam, release. That one is, uh, the head, timing on the heads on this one is a little bit trickier. It's like right before they arc down, so right now is where you have to release. So look at Orochi and release. Keep an eye on Orochi and release. You can get uh, screwed by the uh, fire, so do be careful of that. That was a very early release, for instance. This one you want to release and release. Oh, was the right timing, but I wasn't close enough. You also want to pay attention to that. Uh, if you accidentally do that, you can just time a beat attack right as they get close to instantly kill them. Since there's no Celestial uh, on Orochi, you can just keep walking. At least there's no Celestial if you do the bosses in this order. So onto Spider Queen, we get another Celestial. Uh, you can just run into the Celestial, like so, and speed restore out of it. And into uh, Spider Queen. Now with Spider Queen, uh, it's all about Vine, so you want to uh, use your Vine very smartly. The first Vine I'm going to do is going to put you right at the right place. So you're going to do that one. So this one on the right. Pull you in. You're going to wait until you're about here so you can see that hook. And put that one there. And if you just hold your uh, brush right after you do that, this one will come right into view. And then you have to wait for her to lurch back up, and then you can do the final one. I'm gonna stand right about here, next to the foot. And use two slips. So this is just about the right spot for the, um, for the uh, portal to appear. As you can see, I'm almost on top of it. I want to try and not be actually on top of it, because then this happens. If you're only a few pixels on, uh, you'll basically just have to get off the portal and get back on. It's a little bit finicky. Again, going out of the Celestial, you have to jump into him to save speed. So Crimson Helm can go a little bit quickly, I'm gonna try and do it as slowly as possible. Uh, you start off with a slash of your glaive, this is to start gaining speed and go forward. After you do that you want to use a slip, then Gillstorm, and then run up to him and start beating him. So slip, Gillstorm right after you use the slip, jump. And you want to, in the meantime, while you're walking towards Crimson Helm, you actually want to try and uh, start charging up your glaive. You can do it later, but you get not an instant kill, but a two hit instead. Crimson Helm can be a little bit hard to do well. You stand right there to get close to the portal.
So coming up to the final boss of the boss rush at, on the arc. Um, this one is Ninetales and it works basically the same as the one in Oni Island except for the final phase. So again you want to walk up, use beads, hope to get lucky. Uh, you can even, before uh, Ninetales screams, you can uh, do this one real quick. It's all about hitting uh, enough damage and then hitting the sword. So it doesn't really matter if uh, Ninetales is screaming yes or no. Then you have to wait a little bit and use beads. There you go. Now for this um, for this second phase, we actually use a slip right as Ninetales appears, and then do beads. Um, this is a safer strat than trying to time your beads because this Ninetales has a little bit of a sudden appearance and can be a little bit jumpy right as uh, it appears. So keep an eye out for that one. Again, jumping into this one. You have to jump into that one a little bit earlier uh, because the cutscene starts a little bit earlier. It's a different cutscene than the other ones. And we're just gonna go straight into the Yami portal. So at the start of Yami, you want to start off with a slip. Then it'll give you the first brush power back, and that way you can start using your other abilities as well. Now, right after you use the slip, uh, you want to try and time your beads right as like, right as Yami has landed, and try to get two sets of bead off, beads off of him. Uh, that way you can get just about enough damage on him. Use a power slash after. He gives you another brush power back. I just noticed that I do not have enough damage on him. It can be a little bit finicky. Uh, if it doesn't work, you can always just like wait for him to do an attack like this one. There you go. For the next phase, we're going to stand in the middle. And we're going to try and use as much of our beads as we can. Now you might notice that during the uh, little cutscenes, I, instead of skipping this cutscene, I'm holding the square button, so it's just simply faster. For this phase, you want to try and kill, um, basically like have him lose all of his health just right now or right after getting the water spout and doing the water spout section. So you want to walk over here a little bit to make this as small as you can. Saves a little bit of time and you can do some extra beats here if you still need to uh, hit Yami a few more times. Right as you get your final brush power from this phase, uh, you can just do a dot and bam! Uh, because you have the 8th wonder on, you have the ink bullet ability which basically does a little bit of damage and that is enough to go into the next phase. So for this phase, you want to front load five slips. There you go, you want them around this health. That way, uh, you'll basically have rig the slots to always be this. just simply draw a line. Uh, I usually like to start releasing the brush right as the middle one starts moving 
because the time it takes you to notice that and release the button, um, basically your reaction um, to that is a long enough time for the other one to start moving as well. And that way you can get a really crisp timing. So something like this. If only I could draw well. So right as you get uh, the Veil of Mist right here, uh, he's not going to come up for a little bit. So right as you get it, just instantly start using your slip. There you go. Bam. Now the next phase in the notes uh, says you have to use two slips, two slips, three slips and two slips. What you can also do, what I like to do, is front load six slips. Four, five, six. Uh, that was seven slips. Ah oh, well, I miscounted. But front load, load six slips and then just use one slip uh, after every uh, brush power. Oh wow, I front load. Yeah, front loaded seven slips. <laughs> And just use a slip on every phase. And then right after getting Blizzard back, use the final slip and you'll go into the last phase of, um, of Yami. There you go. Skip the cutscene. That always takes too long to load. And then you want to draw a circle right here. Uh, if you draw it anywhere, oh, if you draw it anywhere else, it might not react. And then you want to do a full charge jump, and RTA timing ends on final hit of Yami. IGT timing ends right now. Now, so what you want to try and do is skip all the cutscenes right after Yami. If you don't do that, your uh, IGT timer will keep going, and you'll be very slow. But anyways, there you go. Uh, that was um, the Okami Nugent Plus Any% percent speedrun. Um, again, the speedrun.com uh, route guide is down below. Um, if you have any more questions in the same set of forums, you'll find the Discord and you can ask any questions in there. So thank you very much for watching and have fun playing Okami.